in this lecture, we're going to be talking about how to use this to conduct a chi-squared test. Now, in the last lecture, we talked about what a chi-squared test was, and we also set up an example for this lecture. So I want to bring up that example, and then we're going to be using this to actually conduct a chi-squared test. So we had two qualitative variables, the type of volunteer and the number of hours that you volunteer. And there were nine numbers that I wanted to really emphasize in that last lecture. And we're going to be using these nine numbers very frequently throughout this lecture. Now to start, if you ever want to do a chi-squared test, you have to first enter in those nine numbers, i.e. your data, into a matrix. So let me teach you guys how to do that. Uh, first, turn your graphing calculator on, and then you're going to hit, and I'll type the instructions up here, you're going to hit second, and then you're going to hit X negative one. That's if you're using a TI-83 or TI-84. It should just say matrix in blue. And now you're going to be given three menus. Those menus are names at the top. You'll see names. You'll also see math and you'll see edit. Now we are going to go to edit. So you use your right arrow key. You can scroll over to the right and you're going to be editing A and B. Now, what you're going to be doing is you're going to take your data, which is are these nine values here, and you're going to uh, figure out how many rows do you have and how many columns do you have. In this case, we have three rows and three columns. Now, they're not always going to be the same, but in this case, they are. So uh, when you hit edit, you're going to edit A, and you're going to type in three and then, and then three again. So you're going to hit three, enter, three, enter. And so you should have a three by three matrix set up. And this is where you're going to enter in these numbers. Now, a lot of people ask me, um, which number goes where? Is it the rows, then columns, or columns, then rows? And it does matter. It's always row, then column. So it's this three, x, that three. So it's three by three in that example, in that order. Now, in the top left, we're going to type in 111. The middle left, we're going to type in 96. The top right, we're going to type in 48 and so on for all nine numbers. Now we're done with matrix A. The next thing we need to do is fill in matrix B. So again, we're gonna hit second X inverse and we're gonna scroll over to edit. And instead of editing A, now we're gonna edit B. B is going to be the same dimensions as A every time. So in this case, it's a three by three as well. But in this case, our entries are going to be a little bit different. And we talked about this in the last class period, but this is where the expected values are going to go. And the way you do that is we're going to take these nine values and I'm going to just erase the actual values themselves because I want to know what the expected values are. This is going to be the expected matrix. And we're going to need this for the chi-squared test. So we talked about how to calculate the expected values for each entry. Um, so for example, the top left entry, um, this one specifically, to calculate the expected value, you take the corresponding row total and the corresponding column total and multiply those two numbers together and then divide by 839. Now the cool thing is with matrix B, if you have the top left entry highlighted, uh, you can just type in 255 times 298 divided by 839 and hit enter. And then it'll automatically update the top left entry with 90.572. So you can do the math on the side or you can just do the math within the matrix itself. Uh, the next one is going to be the top middle. Now the top middle, we're going to do this row total times this column total divided by 839. So it's 255 divided by 379 divided Sorry, 255 times 379 divided by 839. And now you're going to do this for all nine entries in B. So, for example, this one, you're going to use that row total times that row total divided by 839. For this entry, you're going to do 290 times 298 divided by 839. This entry, you're going to do 290 times 379 divided by 839. For this entry, you're going to do 290 times 162 divided by 839. For this entry, you're going to do 294 uh, times 298 divided by 839. 
For this entry, you're going to do 294 times 379 divided by 839. And last but not least, for this entry, you're going to do 294 times 162 divided by 839. All right, so now you have two matrices set up, A and B. A is the actual data, this one right here, and B is the expected matrix that we just calculated. So now we are ready for our actual chi-squared test. Now, it's important to understand that chi is, is spelled C-H-I, and it's actually a Greek letter that looks something like that. Um, so it looks like a giant capital X, more or less. Now, uh, to find the chi-squared test, you're going to hit stat. I'll write the order up here. Stat. And then you're going to scroll to the right to tests. And then you're going to scroll down until you see the chi-squared test. Now, don't do the chi-squared GOF test. That's the chi-squared goodness of fit test. We're going to just going to do the chi-squared test. So you should specifically see this right here. Chi-squared dash test. That's the one you want to do. Now, you should see for observed, it should say matrix A, and for expected, you should see matrix B. If it's not, then you can just hit second uh, X inverse, and you just, under names, just type in A or B, whichever one you need. And then you scroll all the way down and then hit calculate. And then I'm going to tell you what values I get here and what this all means. So I got chi squared equals 12.9909 and so on. And I got a P value, and this is the important one, of 0 0.0113 and so on. That's a really low P value. Now, what happens if you have a low p-value, typically below 0.05? Well, that means that there is some sort of relationship between these two qualitative variables, between the number of hours, I'll use a different color here, between that variable and this variable, the number of hours that you volunteer and the type of volunteer you are. Now, does the chi-squared test tell you what that relationship is? And the answer to that question is no. It does not tell you, like for example, that college students volunteer less than non-students. Doesn't quite tell you that, but it does tell you that there is some sort of significant relationship between the two variables. And that's relevant here. So these two variables, these two qualitative variables are dependent of each other because that p-value is really, really small in this case. Anyways, that is um, how to do a chi-squared test on a calculator. And this is actually the last lecture of our course, last math lecture of our course. I really encourage you guys to check out the conclusion and the bonus lecture um, and any additional lectures that we have. Thank you guys so much, and I'll see you in the next lecture.